Okay, so good morning. Uh, today we are on a theory of interpreting in week nine. Uh, so I would like all, also only uh, doing a review because this is week nine and uh, last week you are on a club of, uh, class off, right? And uh, this is a uh, part of the week nine. So I, today I only do kind of review about how the theory of interpreting begin. So I am quite sure that in the meetings one up to meeting seven, you have already uh, done the activity of uh, the practice but the practice in interpreting, such as uh, doing the interpreting, so you guys have uh, a group discussion with your friends in, in uh, interpreting activity. So in here, I just want to uh, review part of the theory, the theory that probably you have missed about uh, in the interpreting. Here is the uh, first thing first uh, slide. So this is the analysis of interpreting anyway. So there are two procedure of uh, interpreting. The first one is there are mainly two ways for the interpreter to perceive message. One is auditory perception and the other is visual perception. And in this procedure, factors that will influence the quality of the interpretation include the interpreter's listening ability and the setting. Now, it means that being interpreter is quite challenging. It is different with translation, right? Translation, you can you just only write or you just um, find the references later in, in, and you have lots of time in doing translating. But then in interpreting, uh, it is mostly uh, direct speech, direct uh, interpreting means that you have no, uh, you have not much time to uh, think about what to interpret. So it is based on your knowledge, based on your listening ability and also the setting of place. And the second one is the decoding procedure. In this procedure, factors that will influence the quality of interpretation include the source, particularly the speaker, the interpreter's linguistic competence, and his background knowledge, which includes the knowledge of the world and knowledge of the subject under discussion. Well, of course, that is why interpreting and translation, translating uh, are near with linguistic uh, knowledge because it shows your ability to have the language knowledge and also its background and its cultural background, of course. To be an interpreter, you should master at least uh, one foreign language. In this case, probably you can translate Indonesian to Bangkanis, uh, Bangkanis language or Indonesian to English language. Or if you know Mandarin, you can uh, interpret uh, English with Mandarin language. And then uh, the second, uh, the third one is the encoding procedure. This procedure includes the activation of the target language elements found in the long-term memory, as well as syntactic and semantic word processing and word string processing according to the target language syntactic and semantic information stored in long-term memory. Uh, and then the result is a paraphrase in target language of the source language message. Jadi uh, later on, if you are if you want to interpret something, uh, it doesn't mean that you have interpret a, a word. Uh, the meaning, the concept of interpreting means that you have to uh, paraphrase it by your own language, uh, the, the information that you want to share to your audience. And then the expressing procedure. Expression is the terminal procedure in the process of interpretation. Although sound and effective expression can only be realized on the basis of the successful fulfillment of the first four procedure, expression itself directly influences the final output and result thus a great significance. If you want to interpret uh, the message, if you feel doubtful, your audience or your uh, user will probably not uh, uh, get convinced by the way of your interpreting, uh, yeah, interpreting, interpreting skill. So probably one of the uh, your client might feel that the way you express the message will not deliver well, and the, uh, uh, in conclusion, they probably will not use you anymore later on. And this one is basic interpreting skill. The first one is listening skill. The second one is decoding skill, and the third one recording skill. And this last one is re-expression skill. Nah, uh, this one is the detailed information about what, what we have known uh, before about the procedure of interpreting. So the first one is listening skill. Listening skill is a very, um, uh, what is it? It's a very important thing to do in interpreting because listening means 
it is not it is different with hearing ya. Jadi kalau kita sedang mendengarkan itu artinya menyimak, artinya kita tidak bisa terdistract oleh sesuatu hal. Tetapi kalau hanya hearing atau uh, mendengarkan karena kita sebenarnya tidak apa namanya tidak proses pada uh, mendengarkan itu sendiri ya nggak apa-apa. Mungkin misalnya kita samar-samar mendengarkan lagu di kafe, tapi kita tidak serta-merta kemudian menyimak lagu tersebut. Tetapi kalau interpreting, we have to listen, not only hearing, but listening. So here is the, uh, there are several uh, concept of listening skill, several uh, tips of listening skill. The first one is anticipation. Anticipation is an important means that the interpreter to relieve the, the online memory loss so that processing capacity can be preserved for other efforts. From the aspect of language knowledge, knowledge anticipation can be generated from three levels, namely the grammatical, syntactic, and contextual levels. When we listen to a certain language, we have to know the it's grammatical. We have to know the syntactic and contextual levels. Jadi kita harus tahu konteksnya. Although the vocabulary might be uh, familiar, but then we have to know the context. Oh, yeah, this is part of the economic. Discussion. It means that probably our familiar word can be different meaning in economical concept. Improve psychological preparation. Well, of course, you have to be uh, you have to prepare yourself to be confident and to be uh, to be healthy as well. Because if you feel like you have a fever and then you want to interpret something, it will influence the way you interpret because your listening skill might be uh, reducing. Right. So. The interpreter should set up confidence and enhance spirit to overcome difficulties. The interpreter should learn to listen effectively. If you are not confident enough, and then you be in, you are uh, you are interpreter, and uh, you get easily distracted because probably you are not confident, and then you can you, just because the audience is very uh, very good, and then you probably feel like oh I'm nothing here, etc. etc. It will influence the way you you listen. Of course, it will uh, influence the way you receive the message to interpret. And then use redund redundancy in listening training. They should learn to distinguish usable information from redundant information and only concentrated attention. So redundancy means reduce something that is not important, uh, especially when the speaker or the our client use uh, uh, what is it something like uh, it's not important is not the point probably they're just uh, humming or they're just using interjection or they're just uh, part of the blabbering word uh, it uh, we cannot as an interpreter we cannot just deliver the message focus on the point that the the client uh, the client wants to uh, uh, speak to ad, another client and then the second one after listening skill this is a decoding skill so cultivate there are three concepts there are three uh, ways to decode a uh, skill uh, the first one is cultivate familiarity with english pronunciation and familiarize yourself with various pronunciation so if you got uh, what is it the client from philippine for example they have a, a different pronunciation like uh, for example like they have a uh, suffix ion in the end of this uh, vocabulary usually they will say pronunciation right and you as the interpreter should have familiarized with that uh, part uh, for example like um arabic uh, person probably will have kind of different intonation when they speak english or uh what bangkanese english for example if you want to uh, translate uh uh, people from Bangka who speak English and then wants to share it with other uh, Russian people, something like that. So you have to familiarize yourself with Bangkanese accent or an or dialect. Uh, and then the second one is master a well-knit vocabulary system. Here, vocabulary includes not only ordinary words that can be found in dictionary, but also newly adapted words, abbreviations, slang, and jargons. Well, of course, slang in Arabic language can be different with slang in English. Although Arabic language, uh, what is it, as, uh, do, uh, using English as well. Uh, form logical analysis. The first one is cognitive analyzing, in which interpreters relate the speaker's speech to their own knowing and understanding. The second one is analyzing according to the position in which interpreters make analysis based on their position. Jadi logical analysis, kita tidak perlu menerjemahkan one by one vocabulary, but then one single point. 
And then after listening skill, decoding skill, and then now uh, finally we uh, go to re recording skill. So what is recording skill? So visualizing memorization is visualize what speaking uh, uh, saying, for example, to form a picture or a certain scene to accentuate memory. Uh, if you are in a, uh, what is it, in a context of uh, sciences, for example, science discussion, probably, for example, in chemistry, probably you have a periodic table and then you can uh, look at the uh, picture first and then try to describe what is the predict, uh, periodic table means. Reasoning memori memorization, psychological and psycholinguistic experiments show that information is stored in form of abstract new network. Anyway, interpreting can be also, it is not only practice, but also uh, part of the theory. So if you want to study more in interpreting, you can uh, doing a research in interpreting um, uh, field. Jadi, you can uh, what is it, analyze about its psycholinguistic experiment, its psycholinguistic perspective in uh, interpreting. Thinking. In doing so, the memorization of the whole paragraph becomes the memorization of several uh, words. Note, note taking skill, what interpreters need to jot down in notes in words or symbols that can convey the important messages clearly to recognize and can be told efficiently. It means that if you if you have kind of short term memory in interpreting, you may use note taking skill. Although when you take note, it means that you will need more times to take note and then to analyze your our note. And uh, to make it effective, use only um, simple words and or, and or symbols that can convey the important messages. And then the last uh, skill is re-expression. In re-expression skill, you may adding information. Yeah, somehow, somehow, when you interpret a message, uh, for example, like Bangkanese people speaking Bahasa Indonesia, and then you want to translate it in, in English to your audience who cannot understand Indonesian language, it means that you probably have not need to add some information relating to the terminology, termino, terminology that is used by Indonesian people. For example, Indonesian people would like to say, uh, saya berada di... Um, uh, saya berada di lingkungan Muhammadiyah, for example. And then as the interpreter, you have to uh, add some information what is Muhammadiyah means. So probably because your listener in, in English doesn't know all about uh, Muslim um, Muslim field, uh, especially Muhammadiyah. And then paraphrasing and explaining. Paraphrasing is also important when you want to re-express a skill because once again, you cannot just uh, interpret one vocabulary to another vocabulary. So you have to go to the point. If, if for example, the interpreter, uh, the, your client said in Bahasa Indonesia that saya tuh takut sekali karena uh, saya merasa bahwa uh, coronavirus ini akan sangat uh, akan sangat membawa dampak uh, di bagian ekonomi. So you you don't need to say a blabbering word something. I'm I'm very afraid that blah blah because blah blah. So you just go to the point that. Um, he or she is very uh, is very afraid because of this corona uh, corona situation, and uh, that will influence the economic field later on. Something like that. This is part of the paraphrasing, and also explaining. Yeah, explaining means like adding information as well. Right. That's all for my uh, video today. That is for part of the interpreting uh, class. Theory of Interpreting Class Week 9. Uh, probably I will give you a little bit uh, about talk. So later on, I will discuss it uh, in detail one by one uh, about the skill that I have uh, prepared for you. So thank you for today. See you next week. Bye-bye.